26 minutes. All right. Okay. Oh. Will this run out? Hang on. Will this run out or will it run out? Like, is it, like, does the thing cancel itself after an hour or not? Mate, I've got premium. I'm oh, premium. Oh, good. We're good to go. Yeah, good to go. yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. I'll, I'll play that Let game. <laughs> too many times. Well, um, okay, let's let's start. Do you do you recognize this shirt? I think I do. I do recognize that shirt. I recognize it by uh I think it was about four laps to go. We we're about forty guys left in the power time. I looked to my right and gave you a cheeky smile. <laughs> I do. Well, I'm wearing the Nationals Ballarat polo that I had. So this is I was actually extra small. It's it's um it's gonna be Gracie's because they didn't have a men's medium. But um mate. This is the, well, this is the final. How does it feel to be the final guest? Just bookending. I think you did the first step too. I think so. I think so. Pretty special. As it should be, mate. The people's champ. We're back. The OG people's champ. And a little bit of news, mate. A little bit of news. I mean, the real. Let's talk about the real first. Because um, I like the, the different announcements and you know the way teams are doing it these days, it's good. You know, it's a bit more new age. But who actually came up with the idea with the wood chop? Uh, I came up with the wood chop, but the scope I got was to be as Aussie bogan as possible. <laughs> that was that was what I had to come up with. That's good. Okay, yeah. So you had the hat on. Is is that hat? I know you love that hat. Is that the hat from the Olympic Games? The RM hat? No, no, no. So we got an. We got given a hat that you're thinking of at Commies, but that was just a cheapy one. So this is this is uh, the OG Akubra. This is the good one. So premium. I only pull out the best stuff. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> with the VB <laughs> as well. With yeah. The- well, that was a th- sorry, it's a bit of background. So I filmed one with a shirt on, no beer, and they said, "No, no, no, you can do better." So uh, <laughs> I sent you back. The shirt off and VB came out, and I think we hit the mark there. Yeah. Oh, mate, that was perfect. And uh, and the chop just nailed it. Just that's how you do it there in Bright. You just one hit clean through. Yeah. Well, it gets cold there. We're not in WA like you, mate. So even though it's 30 degrees during the day, it still drops pretty cold at night. So we need to get the wood fire stocked up. <laughs> they do. Um, but hey, massive. This is massive news. And it was like the last real transfer announced for the whole season, mate. Back to Jayco. Ineos, what a great start to your um, well, to your career, really. I mean, it was such a big deal when you went there. And maybe when you started, or well, like when you became went to your Neopro year, it was like at, that made the most sense in a way, right? Because Jayco was kind of in the in transition with its Australian sort of, you know, core at that point. And, um, you know, Ineos seemed like the best move at the time. But it just must feel good to come back to Jayco now that it's really just, you know, it's made a big focus on getting that Australian sort of, you know, core back to the team. Yeah, I think he hit the nail on the head. Uh, what was it, two and a half years ago? It just didn't feel right, like the right time. Obviously, I just wrote uh, TD with Richie. And, yeah, I think I think Enios was the greatest place for me to, for me to start. And I loved every uh, second I spent there. So I think it was the greatest thing. And I... I wouldn't change it for the world. And I think the way that they managed to develop me uh, and to get to where I am now it has been amazing. Um, mm. But yeah, like you said, I think the signings they've made this year, I'm pretty pumped to be racing with Caleb and a part of that. And I think just the crew they've got building there, it, it does feel like I'm coming home. I think I talk to a lot of the staff and the riders so much. And obviously my best mate, Blake, is uh, there. So no, nah, I'm really keen to come home. And it sort of doesn't feel like you need one of those team camps or, yeah, uh, camps to like sort of learn the people. Like I feel like I'll just slot straight back in, which yeah, it's what I'm stoked about. And it won't be long till nationals and TDU come around and we're right into the swing of things. Oh, mate, yeah, that's so cool. Like it's it's awesome that you get to ride again with Blake. Like you know, you guys were what were you junior Madison World Champs? Yeah, like, holding that, hands. That's ages ago. And then you know, like that photo you sent me ages ago. Those two fo- with with the bloody bleach blonde hair the world champ bands and now you're back in the same team and obviously like Kel and other riders like that. Like that's just like, you know, it's just every race. It's a weekend away with your mates. Like it's that feeling, eh? Yeah, I think so. And I think like 
I've also found you, you can find something extra when you're with those close mates and working for them. So, and I think you sort of get that just with any Australian. I've noticed that just when you ride worlds, whether it's for Bling or for Hinley and Benno or yeah. one of those boys, you just find something extra. Um, yeah. So, yeah, look, I'm really pumped and I think it's going to be a great four years. It's a, it's a long contract and I'm, I'm really stoked to be part of it. Yeah. Did uh, Is it like, um, well, I don't know, like four years is, yeah, it's a solid one. It's like the next big core of your um, career. Was it always... I know we you always looking to go for something with that length when, when you just were starting to think about, you know, what would be next after Ineos? Were you always going to look for, for that larger sort of turn? No, nah, not really. It just sort of fell that way. I think uh, Giant committed for a while. Jerry's obviously yeah. committed for so long. So it just made sense and felt right. Uh, mm-hmm. It definitely wasn't what we were looking for or asking for. It just fell that way and didn't think mm-hmm. otherwise either. It just, yeah. It, yeah, it just made sense. All of it mm-hmm. did really, to be honest, mate. It didn't take... Too many second thoughts or or weighing things up. It just it just felt like the right time. Yeah, and you know you mentioned Jerry um, and of course Matt White as well. Like those two, obviously they've been the big linchpins of the team for since its inception. And um, yeah, like during this whole process, does does do you ever speak with um, Jerry? Like obviously you know him well, but I don't know. Does he get on board or when you sign, did he give you a call or before that? Any of that sort of? Does he? Did you talk to him throughout the process? Uh, just texting and like, he was a massive part of it. Like I wouldn't definitely be here if it wasn't for him. Yeah. Um, and even 2021, like we had some contact there and it's always been there, but yeah, like you said with Whitey and Brent, like, yeah, it just, it just felt right. Uh, spoke to, yeah, spoke to Jerry and he, he really did make it all possible, especially for next year. Uh, so yeah, I can't wait. He'll be, uh, he'll be at nationals and TDU like always. So it'd be good to get stuck into it. Um, yeah, like you said, I just know all the staff and it's just felt right like the last few weeks, uh, just messaging them all and organising equipment and things like that. So it's it's just flowed really smoothly. Oh, it's so good. Jerry's just – what I like about Jerry is I've never met him. And I, like I said before we were talking, like I don't know if I didn't if I'd even go near him. I'd just like go, oh, there he is. But like I like how he just does what he does in the background. He doesn't ask for accolades. He's never in the media for anything saying, you know, this team – you know, trying to claim anything like, but what he's done for not just cycling, uh, but you know, we'll keep it cycling. He's done so much of the sport and the women's team. Um, you gotta love, you just gotta love people like that. You know, they're just backbones of this, um, you know, the big Australian sporting landscape. Yeah, 100%, mate. He's, he's involved in a lot of sports and I, I'm sure he's just as passionate about them as he is for cycling. Mm. Did I, did I tell you about the, um, the caravan line? Um, used from Bay Crits like <laughs> this no, year. No, go on. So, and this is, I can tell the story now. So, uh, for Bay Crits in Geelong, um, and that's like the, that starts the summer season for Europeans listening, okay? So, that's like the, starts January 1st, right? A little three-day criterion race in Geelong. Beautiful, which I'm going tomorrow. Now, um, uh, I needed to get from Geelong to Ballarat, uh, for nationals and so i didn't really plan a drive i just thought ah i'll get a lift with someone because someone going to the bay crits would be going to nationals and um i just kind of got a bit late with it and in the end i asked um well someone asked um iffy for me if i could borrow a car and he had the caravans that you guys were using for the Citroen. yeah yeah <laughs> just stacking up and that caravan that you guys used had to go to um ballarat for the green edge boys <laughs> and, um, <laughs> if he goes here's the keys just drop me home and you can take it to Ballarat and I was like sweet but you know how they were parked on that grass verge yeah yeah Richie Boulevard well like by the time we packed up it was about 9 o'clock when I had to get this thing off the verge and the curb is huge it was like a you know <laughs> it's like a 50 it's like half a metre of a curb and I remember <laughs> sitting in the driver's seat and I was like Wow, that's a big drop. How did it even get up here? <laughs> and this is a brand new caravan, everyone. This is brand spanking new, apart from like a few water bottles that the team left in there. And um, anyway, I just thought I, it was late. I was tired. It was the last day. And I was like, you know what? It got up here. It can get down. And so, and I don't know anything about this stuff, but I just literally drove it straight down and like it fully bottomed out the caravan. <laughs> This 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 the sales sticker is on it. All that mate and I fucking excuse the language, I went straight down 
<laughs> bottomed out the bumper. All the glasses and stuff came out the back. They uh, came, and I didn't know. I thought the bathroom mirror in the caravan, because it's a luxe Jayco caravan, I thought it shattered. And I thought, you know what? It's 9.30. I haven't eaten yet. I don't, I'm not even going to look. <laughs> Drove, just go. <laughs> I drove it to the quest. I shut the door and I went to dinner. And um, I remember getting to it the next morning and I opened the door to have a look through there. And luckily, mate, just the cups and stuff had come out all over the floor, but they didn't break. And oh, so lucky. when I drove it to Ballarat and I gave it to um, Heyman, he was like, oh, you know, it's all, it's all good in there, nothing broken. I was like, yeah, mate, she's sweet. She's sweet. <laughs> So uh, anyway, Jayco Camden. Winner, winner's Caravan, that one actually was. We had a brilliant three days there. It was the Winner's Caravan. Dream team. That's right. BJ. I've got a um I've got a quiz question at the end of this uh, stage for like But um okay, what about this? Um your time in Eos it was awesome. I mean you had some you had some great uh particularly in the first half of your both of the first two years, but what do you reckon you learned the most? Um during your time at Ineos, maybe like in terms of, you know, just being a professional in cycling, what did you take away from the team that you sort of still, you know, roll with now? Professionalism, I think, mate, those little one percenters that they do. Uh, and also I think the on and off switch in both life and cycling. I think that maybe from the outside, you think Ineos is always on it, uh, which they are when it matters. Uh, yeah. But I think the likes of G, Rowey, Swifty, Tao. Pavel, those guys that are at the top of the sport and some of the best in the world, there's still the balance they have to be able to have that balance and still get to the top uh, when the racing matters. I think G is a class of his own and probably no athlete like it, how he can peak for a race that he's yeah. focusing on. Uh, but also the laid back nature of all of them. Uh, so I think you mentioned it with uh, Joshy Tarling, who's probably one of my closest mates from Ineos, how, you can have so much banter in the bus and have fun, but uh, when you race, you're only there to win. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, which I really love. And like Josh is, he's bloody awesome. He's a, he's a cracking guy and he's going to win 10 world TT titles in the future, probably plus a couple of classics. So wow. I've loved racing with him. Um, but yeah, I think just that professionalism, but balance in life that they have. Uh, mm. And yeah, they made it so easy to get over to Europe and step into the world tour. Yeah. Um, mm. So I'll ever be grateful for for what they've been able to give me and love my time there. Yeah, it's always nice when you see riders and even in any sport when they change teams or yeah, when they change teams, it's like a it's a nice split. You know, both parties have had a good time out of it. You know, it never feels good or feels right when there's been one party disinterested and you start seeing you know stuff like stuff that happened with Caleb. It's just so unnecessary. Mm. It, it's a bad taste, doesn't it? You know, so. The fact that you've got, yeah, you've got a, such a good, um, yeah, it was just a nice finish for both ends. Uh, yeah, that's that's how you want to start your career, isn't it, when you make your first move, I suppose. Yeah, and look, I've taken some best mates from the team, like me and Ethan get along like a house on fire. Mentioned Josh and like Rowie and those boys, I like, can message whenever. So, yeah, I'm really grateful to have met some amazing people and, and learned from, I guess, what you could say is the best in the world. Uh mm. So it has been awesome and, and look, cycling's a small world and you never know when you're going to link up again as well. So I think you want to make it, mm. I guess, a smooth transition too and all be mates. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. They just let you in when it's really tough as well, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Well, think about it longer anyway. Um, what about your, uh, we, I mean, the very first one we did or maybe the second one, I can't remember, but we talked about some of the sponsor items that Ineos were looked after and I think we were, I still think about the jacket the uh the infamous leather jacket um but i <laughs> i wondered what will you miss what's one of the not a bike or equipment but what's some of the sponsor equipment that you might miss from any else that was quite good i think they did the national champs stuff really well like went to town on it yeah so i think uh look bike, hopefully yeah. Yeah, just the whole the whole thing, the helmet, the bike, the jersey, yep. even just the training jersey had the little bands on it, which it, it definitely didn't have to. So, mm. I mean, hopefully we are, we're in this position in 12 months' time and I've still got that jersey. But, yeah, yeah. I think uh, really appreciative, I guess, of like I'm such a proud Aussie and yeah. I think they really let me let me have that and allow it. Um, yeah. And I've got both those bikes and, yeah, look, I love them. And, yeah, that's probably the best stuff. 
Do you still have the bikes? Yeah, I still got. Well, I'm still obviously riding for the team for a few more months. Mm. So yeah, I've still got those bikes. Um, and look, they're as nice a bikes I've ever seen in my life. So mm. I'll definitely yeah. yeah keep a hold of them and display them for years to come. Nice. Yeah, I like that. I think I haven't seen it in real flesh, but it just makes me think of um, Graham Brown's got his Olympic uh, gold winning bike, or that from that Olympics when he won two golds. But he's got it in like a um, like a big perspex box, sort of like on the oh, yeah, yeah. like a full like you know that's what yeah that's a cool like when you get those big wins that's um, I don't mind that yeah, especially yeah. for like Roubaix bikes um, like Clarky's got his um, his his bike from when he won that stage on Roubaix. Um, Unwashed. I remember I talk, spoke to him about it. He just said, don't, don't you bloody touch that thing. And I think he <laughs> told me his miss, his missus drove down from home to meet him and grab it and take it straight home. So they didn't touch it or oh. do anything to it. So I'm pretty sure it hasn't lost a speck of dirt or mud on oh, it. Yeah. Yeah. You couldn't clip into it. Cause there's precious dirt in the cleats, mate. You just <laughs> don't yeah. go near it. Yeah. You know, it's in the jockey wheels. There's history in the jockey wheels. There is. Uh, <laughs> no, that's a pretty cool story. Yeah, I feel bad for Brody because at Trek, I mean, I love Trek. I'm a big fan of Trek because their team, their media staff are awesome, but they don't do the national champs box, which is a shame. Because mm. I remember asking Brody, I was like, oh, you know, what colors your bike going to be? And we had to cut it out of the pod because she was like, oh, they don't do them. And I was like, <laughs> she's a bit bummed about it. I was like, yeah, I'm yeah. Trek, you do everything right. You got to get that. Just put some colors on the bowl dial or something, you know? <laughs> yeah, just anything. Uh, uh. Um, so, uh, oh, yeah, last thing on Ineos, um, Grenadiers. Uh, oh, you got to drive the Grenadier. A few times, actually. Great really? fun, mate. Absolutely great fun. Seen a few of them rolling around Melbourne, actually, which is uh, – I always put my hand up. They've got absolutely zero clue who I am, and I'm like, yeah, chef Um <laughs> So, no, yeah. I love seeing them around and waiting for the uh, the big dual cab ute to come out in Oz in, I think it's Christmas time, which would be pretty cool to see on the roads. But no, well, had a great time. Got to drive it in Andorra in the mountains up there and then TDU time, uh, they took us. Adelaide's got this like, it's this bloke's backyard, but it's probably like oh, 100 acres um, and he's made like a full drive park in his backyard and you just pay like your 20 bucks on entry and then you can just go all around his thing and he's got like river crossings and stuff. So uh grenadies australia took me and richie there and we awesome. uh got to do a little promo during td that's awesome wow yeah it was good fun we'd have to hit him up for a little gravel circuit for if he's got water crossings there's um <laughs> <laughs> seriously i mean there's, there's actually a grenadiers um dealership or grenadier dealership only like two k's down from my house but drop in mate i might drop in and say you know oh, maybe i can take a test drive but yeah. We'll hey, think, speaking of gravel crossings, I was uh, talking to a couple of the bright locals who were at the Gravelista in Beachy the other day. And uh, oh, I'm never going to ride gravel ever, thanks to this. But they were saying how, like, there was this neutral and everyone's behind the car and they're fighting on the car across the other side of the road. And then once the flag drops, you turn off the pitchman onto gravel, basically got this descent, and everyone's like tooth and nail fighting for it. And then. At the bottom of the descent, there's just this massive river. <laughs> and apparently it was just carnage. Bro, this, seriously, that doesn't even do it justice. Everyone listening, you, the Gravelista <laughs> people, they all know it. You know, they know it. But it's like, a, it's like a, if you have, they tried to neutralize the downhill. Imagine 400 people going down a tarmac highway that if you would be free, you'd be freewheeling on a gravel bike, not enough gears to pedal fast. Um, and then you make a right-hand turn onto this basically small, narrow road and it's steep and it's rutted and there's bottles popping out everywhere. Yeah, not a they didn't master that one, um, but uh, <laughs> it <it's>, yeah, <laughs> needs a bit of work, that one. But, you know, next year, they might not even be in Beechworth next year because yeah, right. other regions want it. So um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see where that goes. Mate, there's um, no better region than the high country. I know. And I wore my hat today at golf, wore my ride high country hat at golf. Good man. Good so man. Um, yeah, I've got one. Yeah. I've actually I've got one here too. I should have put it on. It's a nice hat. I thought about wearing mine too, but I've I've got a project maybe that I'll pitch to them next year. So I hope that I'll um, I'm gonna do like a tourism show, but we'll see. Yeah, get me on board. We'll team Oh, up. that could be good. Yeah, yeah. Um okay. Jayco. 
I just look at my little note. I just scribble shit. Okay, yeah, right. So what about this? I was thinking about this on the golf course. Does it get harder at nationals for you with, I mean, because Jaco had the biggest team, right? Well, usually they have the strongest team of the most riders. So does it get harder because there's more options? Not that there's going to be like leadership battles or anything like that, but like there's just sort of more options. So there's more doors that can be open. So I wondered versus like, Solo, do you reckon it will be harder to win or do well for the team? I think first and foremost, we've got to get that jersey in the team. It's been a couple of years now, uh, a good couple of years. But yeah, so I think as long as one of us is wearing it, it's good. <laughs> but yeah, I think there's there's obviously like pros and cons to it. When I was by myself, yeah. it's like any breakaway that goes, you're shitting yourself. You're like, is that the one? Do I need to chase? Should I wait? So you just, you never have confidence in any move that goes mm -hmm. and yeah i guess praying that someone else will do the work for you uh but then at the same time like you can make sure you've got someone in every move but yeah. the pressure's on you if a move goes the road that's not right your team's the one that's got to chase it yes so i really yeah i don't know i think it's got a lot of pros and cons both ways like if a move went last year that say a jaco winner a leader wasn't in it they had to chase like it wasn't mm -hmm. on me mm uh so they have all the pressure but they've got the numbers to make it right yes. so yeah, yeah i think it can go both ways and i think you've seen that like they've obviously won their fair share of titles but also you've got freeberg miles bobridge like a lot of guys have done it solo as well so mm -hmm. like yeah i think there's pros and cons each way and hopefully it falls our way this year mm, yeah hopefully um yeah uh it's such a good circuit i'm actually as much as I don't mind, as much as I don't like a bit of change every now and again, I'm actually disappointed that it is going to leave Bunny Young for a short while at least. After short, this short year. while. Yeah, for a short while. I know they're pulling hard, but it's just the perfect circuit because anyone can win. You know, we've had Robbie's won it, Caleb's run second, Heinrich, you know, those sort of punchy and the sprinters, they can win. It's, it's You can win from solo raids, you know, like... And then obviously, you know, you sort of guys are a bit more into the climbing, they can perform. Like it just suits everyone. And it's the last three editions have been like crazy <laughs> to, as a viewer. Yeah. No, I think so too, man. And I think like obviously Caleb coming back to Jaco, like the whole team commits for him. You you wouldn't put it past him at all to win. So I think it shows you that anyone can get up. So uh I mean, obviously I like it being an hour from home and I love the course, so I'd be happily I'd happily see it come back in a very, very short while. But, yeah, look, happy for a change as well. Um, and we'll see where it ends up. Mm. I have a feeling it might be a Queensland. A Queensland so event. Too. Yeah. Uh, the only other state that, that... hunch. Yeah, it's a hunch. The only other state that could have it would be WA. That's the only state that could afford it. So I reckon Tassie would do it brilliantly. They've had Oceanas for like three or four years in a row before. I think they could do it brilliantly. It's a hard, it's hard to get everyone there, but they've had Oshis there before for like three years in a row. They had it in Launceston, mm, mm. like 2017, 18, 19, I think. So well, you've got the I just think they've got, they've got the roads. Like they've just got the infrastructure to make it great. And like the, it's a town where the whole town would get around it, you know, like yeah. take it to Sydney or Melbourne or even Brizzy. Like it's great, but you don't have the buy-in, I don't think from the public, whether I think Tassie would get that. So um, That's a good I mean, if anyone from Oz Cycling is listening, you probably already signed the contract, but I'm all in for Tassie. <laughs> they, they all listen. They, they're listening. I like <laughs> it. I like it. And Richie would be, I'm sure, if it is Taz, if Tassie, yep. was, Richie would be like right behind in meetings. Um, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's on. I'm spewing the tour of Tassies on this weekend because I did get asked to go to that, but I was like, I, it was too late. I'd already signed up for Dirty Warning, so. I missed out on my Tassie. Uh, no, nah, but something, I don't know, I just saw on Instagram today, like only 33 starters in the last, in today's stage that. or something. I, don't, I, I haven't looked it. into it at all, but I was just like, what the hell? Maybe there? that was like 33 made the final move or something. Yeah, something like that. I don't know. I have to look into it. So yeah. don't, don't quote us on this on a Thursday Arvo, but yeah, <laughs> don't know what happened there. Yeah, well, we'll see. I'm tipping... I'm tipping two mates to go uh, one, two up Poetina tomorrow. Alex Evans and Marcus Cooley. Get oh, the boys up there. Evans is riding well. I'm very impressed with his results. Yeah, he's, he's sniffing. I think, well, I think sandbagging the first two days, I reckon, to uh, have an assault tomorrow. 
I like it. I like it. Um, Declan Trezise has won, I think, almost every NRS race this year, but um, we'll see. I wouldn't mind seeing him too. We'll see. Uh, Yes. Okay. So who who at Jayco are you going to – like, is there someone like the team has taught you just an early conversation, say maybe you will let you – Maybe we'll get you hanging around this this rider to you know work on things, learn from someone. You know, like for GC riding, maybe you're hanging with Yates, or is there anything like that? Like someone you might shadow while you're at Jayco in the initial few months. Not that I've been like not that we've had those conversations yet at all, but yeah, like I hope to learn off Yatesy. I got to ride with Adam a lot last year in Ineos in my first year, and like a heap off him, and he's like absolute crack and bloke and being twins. I'm sure they're both pretty good. Pretty good fellas. So, yeah, I'd be keen to uh, get amongst it with Simon. Uh, and then, obviously, like, I know Derbs and Heppy and those boys really well. So, yeah, mm. just mix around with all of them. Mm, yeah. I, I really like um, Simon. These are – I like – you know, a couple of years ago when the year – that 2018 Giro, and he kind of fell apart at the end, though. But the way he was racing at the start, like, and he won three stages, like, he was so confident. I think it was, like – the year after that, he had that line where he said, you know, I'd be shitting myself if I was the other riders. I I love that. That's not enough cyclists say when they're in good nick. Like, just say it. I'm piping hot. Like, I'm yes. fucking flying. Come at me, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, Poggy, Poggy sort of does race that way no matter what race it is. He does. He lets you know yeah. from 100k out he's going pretty good. Oh, mate, like, you know, making Strava files private. Like, I don't mind a little bit of that, but, like, when you're coming into the race and you're piping hot and I, I really liked it. And he got ripped apart in the media for it and then, you know, you basically never heard from him again in the media. Like, that's it. Like, he killed it. We love a bit of arrogance. <laughs> we love a bit of arrogance on the bike. It's good. Yeah, I like it. I like it. A bit of shit talk in the bunch and, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um okay now i wonder this now i was this is a while ago but why don't we talk about the bike you got g for a birthday can we talk about that oh, now you're frozen <laughs> yeah we can talk about that okay 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 yeah. um so for those that don't know you might you have to see george's instagram george baker of course uh you bought her this amazing track bike pre-world is that right yeah, it was meant to be like a Olympic sort of present, but got a debut for Worlds and get a fuel for it in case something needed to go. Something needed to change before the games, but it's, yeah, Olympics, but yeah, Olympic thing. Tell us about the bike though. What kind of stuff did you get just sort of made with it? The fastest equipment on the market. There was, uh, we made sure that, yeah, it's it's a cracking bike. I love it, mate. And I was, like, I enjoyed just putting it together over a few months, um, mm. so I guess I was lucky enough to have a few people that I know that create some pretty amazing things like mm. Bingham from Watt Shop. He really helped me get that oh, driveline nice. set up and a few ceramic speed things in there. And obviously Pinner helped uh, make a pretty good looking bike. Uh, mm. So, no, nah, it went really well. She uh, did amazing at uh, the World Champs. So, yeah. Yeah. no, I think considering her year and, the thing she had to go through at the start of the year, like I think built really, really nicely into those worlds and really good confidence uh, going mm. into Paris next year. So mm. I think watch watch out Capecchi and the worst of the world. Well, you know, I think people will underestimate how good of a, I think that was such a good finish for Georgia on the way, you know, the back end of the season. Like you said, after the start she um, had, you know, just the health things going on. I think you can underestimate, or maybe people who don't maybe – you know, haven't trained to a really high level or spent a long time on a goal. In fact, a lot of people listening are about to relate. And then you sort of go back to square one, you know, against your own will, you know, and then you've got to come back up like while everyone else is having a great old time and in form and winning races. So the fact that she was able to just get her back up, you know, to speed and do so well, um, you know, meddling, mate, that's confidence boosting. No, it was, mate. And I think like, She's a, she's a fighter and gone through a lot. And I think that that showed a lot of fight and like there's still 12 months to go and it wasn't the great prep leading into that. So imagine what another 12 months can do. Um, I think there's a few girls that had just come off the tour and obviously showed to the world how good they were going. And mm. gee, it was, uh, I think it came down to the final sprint in uh, yeah. the racing to, to decide the winners. So, oh, look, I'm just as pumped for, 
for the Olympics, like to watch her as I am to hopefully go myself. So, yeah, it's exciting times and the sort of the final build to the game sort of starts now, doesn't it? Like everyone's finished their off season and now you're right back into it. And oh, before, I think it was like 265 days to go or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. it's going to come around pretty bloody quickly. Mm, they will. And they just announced direct flights from Perth to Paris. So look out. You got yours booked, mate? Uh, not yet. <laughs> Sponsor pending. <laughs> Who sponsors the Olympics? At, at Qantas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I need someone to totally torch their voice and maybe I can get a good, uh, <laughs> on the board. McGorry just, you know, Scooter torches his voice. Sorry. <laughs> uh, oh, speaking of um, one day races, did you see the world's course announced today or at least got shared? Did it really? No. The, in, in Switzerland? Yeah. The Swiss Zurich, yeah. So, um, yeah, 246K for men's, 4,400. Look on Twitter. It's on there. You know, all the boys, Benji and stuff have shared it. But 4,400 metres. Um, Cheapest. Yeah, and the women's, I think, is 150 with 3,000. So not quite as, as heck. That's, that's 3,000 3, and 150 is big, though. Still a lot, yeah. And then the TT, I think, yeah, I, can't, I don't think I looked at the TT, but... Yeah, the road race looks um, poor. 4,400. 1.2 kilometres at 12%, 1.1 at 8%, 2.3 at 6% on the laps. Yeah, that's rough. That's hard. What was that first one? 1K at 12%. 1K at 12% but gets to 16. Oh, that's like pog territory. Nah, mate. Jai. Jai Henley territory, that. That's Jai... <laughs> get him oh get him up and about don't make I reckon. Me get my shirt <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> surely yeah. mate we got to get around him i saw that many joy hindley shirts when he was in the yellow jersey mate at the, after the tour he won that stage in the yellow i wore mine through the city i was walking around i got a few nods on the bus i was running on the bus like you can't good. miss it and i just got a couple of yep a few nods yep. they were watching yeah good good Love that. It's getting around. Yeah. That's tough though, man. Wish I didn't see that till like I'm a bit leaner and got back into the swing of things. That's hard to see when you just come off off season. <laughs> Four and a half thousand meters. Whoa. What would you make think, Mr. One Hour 40? <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, shit. That, I would love to go to Switzerland outside of racing because you've done Swiss once. No, yeah, done Romandy. Romandy and then raced my junior worlds was in Switzerland in the same area. Oh yeah. So well, I mean it was on the track, but we stayed on the top of the mountain that uh we race up a lot. So oh, it's a beautiful town. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Did you spend any time there like before or after or just you didn't have uh, no, not really, to be honest, mate. Not really. Mm. But no, it is beautiful. Mum and dad stayed there a lot. Like when I was there for worlds, they like spent I holidayed around it, so saw a lot of photos and heard a lot from them. But now it's beautiful. It is beautiful. Well, I guess the best part is it's back to like the end of September time slot sort of thing where mm. you can sort of holiday after. Whether when it's in August, you're like, all right, race is finished. You've still got five or six races left for the year. So it. maybe we'll be able to experience a bit after after this world, hopefully. Oh, I've got to get there first. but Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah. You don't have bloody Guan Chi. And just lingering, just the no out of Guang Chi. Just oh shit! I was just looking at forty six k four hundred meter TT, mostly rolling, undulating section at the halfway point. That sounds pretty good. Hey, forty six k, about time. Yeah. Keep that's it not bad. Hey, you got yeah, yeah. fifty five minute sort of thing. Women thirty k. That's good for the. That's good for the women too. No, we it's, like that. We're back. That's good for them. Big big King Kong. He'll be. It'll be frothing. I mean, for the TT. Yeah. But uh, Bissiger as well. Bissiger too. Yeah, a bit long for him though. He likes the short ones. Really, mm, maybe. Yeah. I don't yeah, know. yeah. I don't know. Uh, so, um, yeah, today did a bit of testing work, but uh, the one thing that's improved a lot, or at least you know, the media would be able to pick up on it, has the TT set up for Jayco in the last eighteen months, maybe two years, maybe, but eighteen months we've seen it. That seems to have been a massive shift with the team. You know, all of a sudden you're hearing about special skin suits for Yatesy and 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 the boys in the TTs, and then all you hear now about the giant uh, Trinity is how yeah they have a 
but it's a well-regarded time trial setup. So that must excite you. It does, mate. There's uh, a bit more to come as well next year. So I think uh, watch this space. But yeah, look, in 2021, when I was uh, on the Trinity before I was pro, I loved the bike uh, and had some good success. Uh, yeah, it, that was, I guess, another factor. Like I really, I, I know I like the equipment there too, but yeah, I'm really stoked to get back back on board with it. And so far it's been like just looking at things and talking to the people. Uh, it's good and it sounds like there's some really exciting things to come in the future too. Hmm. When you're doing like, and you might have done it Jayco, yeah, we could probably definitely have it, but when you've done I'm sure you would have done it at Ineos. When you're fitting like the skin suits and stuff, you know, maybe you're getting one specially made for you know, something that's very important. Like what's the actual process of getting like properly fit it like do you get measured up and then do you put like one on they start you know pinning stuff up or like how does that sort of work yeah i think that was like the two to three year approach three, two to three years ago approach like you put it on and they sort of like you had a tailor to come and do it sort of like you'd right. wear for a suit but uh now it's just ridiculous mate like you get in your position on the bike like just in your jocks and you just get like this 3d scanner that goes around your body for good 15 minutes and they like scan every part of your body while you're in position. Uh, and then out pops a suit. So really wow. yeah, we do that obviously for like the Olympics and uh, yeah, it's very, it's coming. So it used to just be like the Olympic thing. Cause obviously it's a costly process, but it's creeping more and more into the world tour. And I'm sure those, a lot of those top teams are all doing it now. Wow. I wonder if you could do that with anything. Like, could you put like a, like a loaf of bread on a bike and then it just scared 100%. It. <laughs> just, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Mr. Earl. <laughs> Mr. Earl over there, Mr. Black Cat, he's just uh, he's just on the couch right now. Hang on. Oh, look at him. Look, I just we could get it. We could get him a suit. He's a big juice, Mr. Earl. <laughs> um, but we could put him on the bike and just sort him out with a little aero number. What do you I reckon think? Kenneth, Kenneth Sink could get him some. Bars to match his paws there. He need the big extensions too. We've we'll tucked that tail in. Oh, <laughs> that is so interesting though. Wow, I didn't know that. It sounds like a like a. It's not like a someone's moving the machine, or is it is a machine that goes around you like an ambulance? No, no, it's like imagine like a big uh, video camera, like big, like oh, yeah, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 like a big like a box thing. video camera. Yeah. No, like a it's like a square box. Oh right. Uh, and it's just like a, yeah, it's a massive video camera, and they just like go around your whole body and scan your whole body, like head to toe, while you're in position. Uh, wow. It's too the data science is too complicated for me, but all I know is I sit on my bike, this <laughs> flashing light laser three D thing goes around my body, and then it takes a while. So like maybe four, six weeks later, oh shit, suit pops out. Yeah, it's a while. It takes a while to like I guess oh, I don't know, mate. Process it all, print the suit, get the colors wow. right. But wow. uh, yeah, it's high tech okay. stuff now. Okay. Uh, yes. Well, yeah. Oh, okay. So, right. Okay. Um, so, I love that segment. So, for your off-season, you spend a lot of time in Bright. That is one of your, well, God's country, right? Best uh, place in the world. Tell, and you told me, but just tell everyone listening, why do you always go back to Bright in your off-season? It's just... Yeah, there's nowhere else in the world like it, mate. I absolutely love it there. I've got a little hobby farm. Um, yeah, just in the mountains, the valleys are beautiful. It's 30 degrees during the day, drops to like four or five overnight. You're all rugged up by the campfire. Yeah, there's just nowhere else like it. Like you get out of the hustle and bustle of whether it's Melbourne or Europe or apartment living. Um, and you've just got space. You've got that fresh mountain air, the rivers and uh, – I mean, I love it when I'm not riding. And then when you are riding, like there's nowhere better to train. I don't think there's not a traffic light within probably 300k radius of you. Um, and you got the beautiful valley flat roads where you can do as much flat as you want or you can go up the four major uh, ski resorts of Australia, basically. Like you're just missing Kosciuszko there, which is only just across the border. But yeah, yeah you can go up to all the ski resorts and do 30k climbs. You can... I sound like an advert for Ride High Country. I should. Oh, I am. Where's your but, hat? <laughs> yeah, I know. But oh, mate, it's just the greatest place. I, I love it. You can go fishing. They got the brewery there for off season. They got the best cafe as well. So I absolutely love it. Um, 
always we've just had long weekend melbourne cup weekend here in melbourne so had all the boys up camping in the swags on the blocks uh no, I love it up there, mate. I, I really do. So I probably sound like a broken record, but no, no, I absolutely no, love it. Not at all. Um, yeah, that's awesome. And you've got Tour of Bright coming up too. How good. Best race of the year. Oh, yeah. I can't good. wait. So three yep. three stages. We go up uh, Tawonga in the morning, TT in the afternoon, and then the next day up uh, the best mountain in the world, I reckon, Mount Buffalo. Have you got the KOM? Only up Tawonga. But then the TT, right? So this is, I put it on Instagram this morning. The TT goes past my front door farm. Oh, wow. So like, I need to get that. Like, you have to get that. Like, <laughs> it's, it's my street. Property, it's my street, yeah. <laughs> so we've got to get that. And then Buffalo's like, oh, man. So we used to do, I don't, you probably, I don't know if you were following it or knew anyone in the sport back then, but like, poor 2014, 15, 16, we had the Australian Hill Climb Championships. It's not a thing anymore. But there was like an Australian title. For climbing a mountain back then. See. So there was a TT that went bottom to top basically the yep. first day. And then the next day it was a road race bottom to top. Uh. And it was always up Mount Buffalo. So ever since then, I've loved it. Um, and I've always like, one day I'll get that calm. And when I was really young, I think because I was so much lighter, I was actually pretty close. And then you get like go through puberty <laughs> and you get a bit heavier. And I'm like, oh, it's getting further and further yeah. away. <laughs> um, but look. That, I'll say, I'll say it out. That's a challenge for me this year. I really want that. I think uh, 2019 Tour of Bright, they took it. I think Jesse Feedenby, so shout out to him. Oh, really? Has got it. Yeah, and Lionel Mordwit. I think uh, those yeah. boys have got it. So some absolute NRS battlers from back in the day have got it. Um, <laughs> Lionel's so, tiny. Yeah, so that's that's a challenge. So I want to want to try to get that. I feel like it's my home. It is my home race. I feel like it's my yeah, favorite yeah. climb. So. It is. So we'll go after that. Okay. That's, the, that's the goal this year. Okay. So, yeah, everyone else, December 2 3, get your registers in. Let's sign get up. Sign up. Even I tried to get there, but maybe next year. Because it's the 20th year, isn't it? Uh, I'll take your word for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure it is. I, I'm pretty sure because I asked if I could, if I can come. I said, if Flappy's going, <laughs> if you do a whole thing, thing there, but we weren't sure. So, maybe next year. Maybe next year is the 20th, actually. Uh, anyway, but Tour we'll of Make Bright, it happen. Even from Perth, um, and I reckon it was around that time that I heard about it because uh, it was when I first started cycling. I heard about this Tour of Bright. Um, yeah, it sounded so exciting. Well, it's also one of the only races in Australia that you're allowed TT bikes these days. Ah. especially when it falls, like yeah. pre national TT. Man, I'm pumping it up, but get down, like it's it's bloody brilliant. Well, it, you know what appealed to me was when I first started cycling. It was like the only kind of stage race, like a proper yeah. stage race that had grades for just average Joes and Joes. Yeah, anyone can get in, and they mate, they fill them all up. I think it was to D grade. Oh, it's bloody brilliant. That's sick. Okay, yeah. uh, is is Mansfield near Bright? Yeah, so that's like the valley over, like the mountain range over, like closer to Melbourne. So it's Beautiful. like Mansfield and Bull is two hours away and then Bright's three hours away. Okay. Well, I'm on for Tour of Mansfield. So Beautiful. Uh, we're on for that one. Uh, okay. So I've got some questions for you. I've got four. We've kind of already answered one. But which Aussie rider, who needs to come to Jayco next? Who you put your target Hindley. on? Who? Jai Henley. Jai Henley or Benno. One of the WA boys, mate, I reckon. That's a good call. That I can see, I can see Jai. I can definitely... One of them, you know? One of those big mm. WA Aussie boys. I love to say it. Oh, well, you capture half the country. You just capture Or bring back Skip, Caden Graves. Oh, that I wouldn't mind a swap. I love Grunewald because he's a bloody psychopath, but I would love the swap. Play yeah. the swap. Bring him back. So I'll give you those two. Well, those three. Okay. Nice. Oh, Caden. Yeah, love that. Just shame. I bet they wanted to keep him, but... I reckon Alperson's deal must have been too juicy to take, but he could come back like others have. Um, now, what are, this is some trivia. Now, UAE Tour this year, GC, you were 59 seconds behind Remco, second place. Not bad. Pretty good, too. Um, at the start of the year. Uh, but who, overall GC, finished fifth, a minute seven behind you? Remco, me... Yates, Bill Bow, Sebkus. It is nice. 
<laughs> oh, very good. Not bad, that. I gave you top five there. That is solid. Even I forgot about Bill Bow. Oh, yeah. nice. Okay, yeah, very good. GC Kush, what a ledge. Um, oh, you'll easily get this then. Okay, do you the podium of the TT at Nationals? That's, I don't want to bring that up, but, you know, do you remember who was ahead? In yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I was looking at it today, actually. Uh, oh. Jay Vine... Three seconds to Durbo, 26 seconds to Kel, and I was 27 seconds back. I was looking at it today. I cheated. Ah, oh, yeah. That's 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 tough. Do you know, at the podium, there was this guy who owns the Environ box. You know, that sort of core flip. Yeah, I, I know, yeah, I know the fella, yeah. He's a legend. He's awesome. Yeah, he's, he's an awesome absolute legend. all day trying to give people these boxes, and he was trying to give me one. I was like, I would love one, but I didn't bring my bike, and I'm not bringing this on the plane. But... On, when we were doing the presentations for the winner, you know, I'm like calling out Javon, your national, you know, ITT champ. You know, that was televised too. The guy gets on stage and slides his bike box across, like covering the sponsors <laughs> in front of Jay. And Jay's like, you know, he wasn't even a sponsor of the race. He just turned up and was just getting his airtime. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he's been around for years. He's sponsored really? on like. TA for years, like we all like with the track program. Whenever you travel around, yeah. he's we use his stuff, man. He's been he's it's he's a an good OG. product though. Like it's a legit yeah. product. It's so good. You and can like, you can get like wheels for it too, man. It's yeah. bloody good. Yeah, yeah. It, and the, the margin you make on those things as well, because like it's just oh yeah, core yeah. flute. Like it's core flute and like yeah, a couple of wheels and some straps. Um, very good product. But I just I remember that. Um, ah, <laughs> oh, that bloody yeah. Next year, mate. Um, oh, okay. Who? Okay, who won? You might know second and third stage actually, but who won the first stage of the Bakerits this year? Did we not win every stage in the team? As a team, did we not win all three? Did you? Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. In my head, in my head, BJ just cleaned up, man. I thought we just won every single race. He Maybe did. I'm wrong. Well, he won the first one. Wait, did he? He definitely won the first one. I th- I mean, no, we had won. the dream team. It was me, Blake, BJ. We couldn't lose, could we? It was his retirement no, race. Did, what, did team. Brenton win the first one? He did. I reckon we yeah. won them all then, mate. No, because on the third stage... Oh, the uh, hot dog. I pulled out. Yeah, I hated that. On the th- No, actually, on the second stage, the reverse, when you're going up the berg on that... Um, that yeah. little kicked left hander, we go um, sort of fought BJ for the wheel and he dropped his chain. I don't think he got the second stage. Oh, oh Frizzly. Big Grizzly Frizzly. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. All I remember is taking the piss that week, mate, with BJ. Oh, what a thing. Because no, it was like it was like the fairy tale, you know, because BJ helped Blake the year before, which got Blake a World Tour contract. Like, BJ could have won every single stage for the last five yeah. years, ten years. Yeah. He's like the... OG monster, you can do whatever he wants. He is, yeah, yeah. Uh, shout out BJ, we love him. But yeah, we do. yeah, and then I remember it was like last race, his family organizes it all. Yeah, so we got yeah, yeah. if he got the dream team together to uh yeah, yeah, win it for BJ. For the last one too. That was awesome. Yeah. Brandon's oh, legend. Le- and you know what? That podcast I did, second episode, Brendan Jones. Um, when I first met him, you know, part of the Jones family clan many, uh, many times now working at their events, but it was that podcast that really introduced me to Karen. And then uh, yeah, yeah. Karen came across for seven and we'd been talking and, um, you know, here we are now, I work at all her events and like see her family all the time. And they're absolutely every single Jones, which there's just so many now, mm, they nice. all saints, like, and saints. Speaking of, we should, uh, we should let everyone know. So three days after Cadell's this year, like if there's any pros listening, stick around for three days for the warning. Like it's only three days. Yes. You've been in Oz for three weeks or whatever. Three more days to race. What is it? Second longest or the longest race in the world? The longest one day race yeah. behind San Remo? The second longest yeah. in second oldest in history or something? Second oldest, second longest. If it's good enough, if it's good enough for Froomey, it's good enough for anyone else. Yeah. Get to the warning. You got all that road form. Why go back to Europe too fast? You got beautiful yeah. weather, and you got two hundred and forty k's of nah, 70, 70. 70. That's what I'm thinking It's of big. Yeah, it's big. Yeah. Two seventy, and you've got all these domestic riders just trying to 
bring you down, you know, like beat you, <laughs> chop your wheel up. But <laughs> yeah. a bit of, bit of both. <laughs> there's probably, there's probably, I still remember Lockie Morton was riding around and he cut his jersey like into a crop top for the race. <laughs> so, I, I remember driving, I was driving past the bunch and I see Lockie Morton riding in the gravel trying to go around the bunch and he's cut his shirt in half. And he's unzipped it, so it's just flapping <laughs> like this. He's a specimen. <laughs> he's a specimen. Of, oh shit! Yeah. So that's right. Stick around for the warning, and um, it is. I mean, you get your name on that plaque. I'm still amazed they've got that plaque in the main town mm. square, like in the park area, and you've got everyone's the past winners, like a hundred and hundred and six or hundred and seven past winners. Like Timmy Decker's on there. Shout out. Now we we should get sponsored for this pod. We should get a bit of coin today. We pumped everyone up. We should, yeah. It actually should be yeah. some kickback. So I might hold them ransom. And say, yeah, pay up because uh, Papi needs a second story on the hobby farm, and I need <laughs> uh, I need a private jet <laughs> to get across to you. <laughs> um, mate. <sighs> okay, I think that's it, mate. I reckon that's it. The la- this is oh this is the last episode of the year. It is. It's almost sad. Big year, big year ahead. That's it. You've had some bloody good people on this show this year. We've loved it. Yeah, it's been nice. You know, it's nice uh, talking to the, to the writers. And I hope that, I mean, I always feel bad when I'm interviewing them because I'm like, oh, they've probably got so much other stuff that they'd rather do. But every time we get someone on, they've always been um, super nice. And actually, one writer who I'm talking to in December, you know what, they're, they're, they're an hour in. They get to know. It. I've got Mahorich coming on at some point next year. Oh, oh that's that's huge. But he he called. Well, it's actually next week, but I'll we'll, we'll say it for next year. He called me yesterday while I was writing, and like I've never had a writer call me and be like, because the the press officer said they he'd give me a call because he's free, and I was like, he will call me. That's kind of weird. Like, <laughs> you know, and I was just yeah, like, yeah. oh wow. And he gave me a call while I was writing. I had to stop. And I was like, oh, and he was like, oh yeah, I can do an hour if you want to do an hour, an hour and a half. And I was like. Yeah, great. <laughs> so it's love that. Say. Who's let's a couple of questions, and then you can. I'll, I'll give you mine. Who's favorite you've done this year, and who do you want for next year? I'll go. I love Mads Pedersen this year. He's one of my idols. Love yeah. Mads. Mads. And then was, yeah. uh, you'll have to crack him open because you got to yeah, you got to crack him open a bit to get the good stuff out. But Ethan Hayter, he's the one I want to hear. I've been. Ethan almost happened, actually. Um, Jamie just yeah, kind of... Jamie onto it, yeah. He was fighting tooth and nail. I really had to pester him, and then I sort of gave up a bit because I got the feeling like it wasn't happening. But, I mean, <laughs> Ethan, I do... I will... I haven't given up. I just gave it a breathing space. But um, I'm just looking through all the episodes now because you can actually forget. I agree. Mads is one of my favourite writers. That was pretty special to get him. Um, yeah. And I did enjoy that and just a sense of humour. But... Oh, so many. Yeah, Matt was good. Who else we had? We had, um, I mean, I'll tell you what, I mean, talking to Gripal was pretty cool. Um, yeah. The Matt Dinner one right after his, that world's yeah. race, that was pretty sick. Um, yeah, Charlotte are cool. That was a nice yeah. one. I enjoyed that. Because she is such a big fan of cycling herself, so like she knew all the men's races and winners, and she was a full frother. Um, was Swifty this year or was that last year? That was last year. Swifty was quality. Yeah, because yeah, you know, I've written, all, I've read all the books about the Rainbow Project and all that stuff. So I was getting them talking about all that stuff. That was yeah. He you got to see if you can get Rowie on. He's good crack, mate. I want to get him on big time. Yeah, he's yeah good I crack. do. He's good crack. I do. Also. I, Look, you haven't had Loretta, have you? She's awesome. Hanson, no. Yeah, yeah, Loretta. Maybe, maybe this this uh, nationals actually. Yeah. Um. God. Oh, Dennis was good because he really had no filter. Um. Yeah. And he was pretty good, uh, especially. Yeah. God. So. Nah, it's been it's been a good year, mate. Congrats. It's been awesome. Thanks. Um. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. Um. And it's great talking to you, having you on here, mate. You're the most requested guest and most. <laughs> episodes too now <laughs> we love that we'll do uh we've got to do a live one when we oh. see each other next well yeah i reckon around the aussie summer i could be on tdu time maybe i don't know we'll see how the calendar's Perfect. going 
Um, yeah, yeah, but that. who I want to get on. Mm. Episode 100 for me is a big deal and it's coming mm. up next year and I will hold the podcast ransom if I don't get the guest I want. And I should I just say it? Who call it, call it, Matt. Give okay. it. You got to put it out there. I'm only one of three writers. No, actually, one of two writers. The hundredth episode is either going to be Mark Cavendish or it's going to be Vanderpol. It's one of those. Jeez, that's huge. That's huge. That's it. And I won't do. It. I'll be on ninety nine episodes for yeah, a year. Sit there. <laughs> and but look, thank God for Zwift. We love Zwift. They both heavily linked with the great brand, the greatest indoor training platform ever, and. I think I can work the magic. Give me six months, you know. I'm going to massage it in. That's huge. <laughs> I love so, it. Put it on the pod now. So. <laughs> Just stuck if, people, it, right? if people listen to this shit talk for long enough, they deserve to have heard it. <laughs> Imagine 10 years down the track, I go look at the old TPR Instagram account. There's just 99 tiles. The owners <laughs> I mean, never he, cracked it. He never made it. Rest in peace. He never raised the part. Yeah. Oh, no, I love it. Put it yeah. out there. Yeah. Oh, mate. Unfortunately, thanks. I do not have the phone number of either of those two. So that's okay. I reckon, I reckon, I think the universal will help me. I really think good. so. I think so. Um, but yeah, mate, it was so good. I hope everyone enjoyed this episode. It's the last one. We got to talk to the the Aussie champ, mate. Going back to the Aussie team. What and the exclusive too, you know, just a couple days after the, the wood was sliced. So thanks, yeah. mate. No, thank you, mate. It's always a pleasure and can't wait to catch up in person soon.